from my university, including myself, were respected then. Today, it is not a university like it was before. It is time that East House considers putting money into the same university so it can develop and be a university that was before. Thank you, Speaker. Honorable members, Chairman Meli, what you have attempted to say on Moy University is not only inadequate but unacceptable to the House. As you can see what your colleagues are saying. This House will be sitting up to the afternoon at 2.30. You must bring information from the Ministry when this university is opening at 2.30. Adequate or inadequate, you must tell the House when this university is opening. Parents Thank go through serious, serious soul searching to help their children maintained and sustained in institutions. And we cannot, as a responsible house, procrastinate on this matter anymore. Yes, Meli? Mr. Speaker, I, I do agree with you wholeheartedly and even the issues raised by members. But when a minister, a ministry official or a PS gives a, a two-paragraph statement on a such a serious matter, it is actually belittling the house. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, I gave out the statement raised by the Honorable Member and just to be given a two-paragraph statement, which is very wrong, issues facing more university on financials, governance, and even issues of uh, poor governance is very big. And I did not expect that, Mr. Speaker, that I bring such a very poor as thing. As chairman I of shall, the committee, you know what I to shall, do. I shall take action, as you have said, and I'll bring a statement this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Russell, uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the statement that was raised yesterday by Honorable Chonga from the floor of the House, there is enough evidence that what the Honorable Member raised, the County Commissioner, the DCCs, all of them are aware, and indeed, that family, because they don't have enough, the man who had the resources had to throw them out of that land. So it has been confirmed to that extent. Is Chonga in the house? Is Ken Chonga in the house? That was his statement, right? Yes. So for that reason, Honorable Speaker, the task that you gave me is that the county commissioner and the DCC are going to sit this morning and they are going to deliberate on this matter as far as removal of that family from their land is concerned. But what they have also confirmed, the matter is in court. What everybody was wondering is how the family was thrown out of their homestead. So for that reason, the ministry and the county commissioner is seized of that matter. And in the next one, two days, they are going to give us feedback that the family is restored back to their homestead. That is what we have gathered so far, Honorable Speaker. But we'll also not leave it to that. We'll follow it up. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Ken Chonga is not in the house, so we'll, we'll leave it there. Yes, yes, uh, Chairman. I know my very able chair actually uh, made the preliminary report on the same, but I've just got the information or the report from the ministry that the report can be even uh, ready as this afternoon. Yes. You will deliver a statement in the afternoon? Yes. Excellent. Member for Moyale, Jaldesa Guyo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 42C, 
I rise to request for a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Internal Security and National, National Administration regarding the reopening of Illo gold mine in the Bale Moele constituency. Honorable Speaker, in 2023, the residents of Moele discovered traces of gold in the Illo area of Dabel, Marsabet County, following a prolonged drought from 2021, 2021 to 2023, during which pastoralists lost more than 80% of their livestock. The discovery of the Illo gold mine offered a new lifeline and an alternative means of livelihood for the community. However, in March 2024, a disagreement between two Atseno miners resulted in the tragic loss of lives. Consequently, the Minister of Interior and National Administration ordered a 30-day closure of the gold mine, citing insecurity and the absence of proper administrative and structural structures, administrative structures to manage the site for the welfare of the community and other stakeholders. Honorable Speaker, since the closure, several positive developments have taken place. Community organizations have transformed into cooperatives to oversee the administration and management of their natural resource. Unfortunately, it's alleged that some members of the security agencies have begun engaging illegal mining activities in the area, providing misleading response to justify the continued closure, thereby excluding the residents and benefiting from the, the residents from benefiting from the situation. In September 2024, Marsabet County leaders met with the Cabinet Secretary for Ministry of Interior and National Administration to discuss the reopening of the Illo gold mine and other security concerns. Although there was a unanimous agreement to reopen the mine, just two weeks later, the Cabinet Secretary extended the closure by another 30 days, further disadvantaging the local community. Honorable Speaker, it's against this background that I request for a statement from the Chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Internal Security and National Administration on the following. On the following. One, a report on the status on progress towards the reopening of the Illo gold mine. Number two, actions being taken by the Ministry of Interior and National Administration to facilitate the reopening of the Illo gold mine along with the implementation of necessary administrative and security structures to safeguard lives, property, and the welfare of the local community. And finally, efforts to ensure that the cooperative established by the residents are recognized by the legitimate as the legitimate additional miners. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order, honorable members. Clerk, we'll go back to order number three. Order, members, take your seats. Order number three, messages. Members on their feet, take your seats. Order, honorable members, take your seats. Honorable members. I have a message from the president. on the nomination of Professor Kithure Kindiki, EGH, to fill the vacancy in the office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Order. Order, members. Honorable members, pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 42.1, I wish to report to the House that today morning, I have received a message from His Excellency the President regarding the nomination of Professor Kithure Kindiki EGH to fill the vacancy which has occurred in the office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya following the impeachment of the previous office holder. Honorable members, as you are aware, Article 149.1 of the Constitution provides as follows, and I quote, Within 14 days after vacancy in the office of the Deputy President arises, 
The President shall nominate a person to fill the vacancy and the National Assembly shall vote on the nomination within 60 days after receiving it. Honorable members, as you are aware, for a person to hold the office of Deputy President, the person must meet the requirements specified in Article 148, as read together with Article 137 of the Constitution. In the message, His Excellency the President indicates that as a prerequisite to the nomination, he sought and received confirmation from the I Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, that the candidate is qualified to, re to view, sorry, to vie for election as a member of parliament in accordance with Article 137, 1 of the Constitution. Further, His Excellency the President confirms that he has sought and received clearances from the following institutions with respect to the candidate. One, the Kenya Revenue Authority, KRA. B, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, ESCC. C, the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, DCI. D, the Higher Education Loans Board, HELP. And E, the Commission for University Education. Honorable members, in a testament to the foregoing, His Excellency the President has annexed the following documents in relation to his nominee. A, certified true copy of his certificate of birth. B, certified true copy of his national identity card. C, certified copies of his university degrees and other academic certificates. D, Certification of Foreign University Degrees by the Commission for University Education. E, Passport Size Photograph. F, Curriculum Vitae and Testimonials. G, Confirmation of Compliance with Article 137 of the Constitution from the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IBC. H, Confirmation of citizen status by the National Registration Bureau, Office of the Registrar of Persons. I, confirmation of membership status in a political party from the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties, or RPP. J, policy party membership confirmation from the United Democratic Alliance, UDA. K, chapter six of the Constitution, statutory clearances on leadership and integrity from one, tax compliance certificate, Kenya Revenue Authority, two, ethics and anti-corruption commission, three, certificate of good conduct from the Directorate of Criminal Investigation, DCI, four, compliance higher education loans board, and five, credit report and certificate of clearance from the Credit Reference Bureau. In view of the foregoing honorable members and having perused the attached, the attached documents, I am satisfied that the candidate meets the requirements under Article 148 as read together with Article 137 of the Constitution to fill the vacancy in the office of the Deputy President. Consequently, the nomination is properly before the House for purposes of the decision required under Article 149 -1 of the Constitution. Honorable members, Article 149.1 of the Constitution suggests that upon receipt, states that upon receipt of a nomination of a person to fill a vacancy in the office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, the House is required to vote on the nomination. Considering that the House is scheduled to proceed on recess at the rise of the House this afternoon, I'll convene a meeting of the House Business Committee immediately hereafter to deliberate on the next steps to be taken by the House. Thereafter, I will guide the House on the decision of the House Business Committee, and the House is accordingly guided. I thank you. Yeah, because now you are properly seized. On the <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, Article 149 of the Constitution provides